Mike Angove is our MMA commentator and analyst. He's an old mate, and we've been yakking to him for years about this. Well, you've had a couple of days or a day or so to process it now. I want to talk about Ulberg and obviously the hangman. So City of Kickboxing did pretty damn well. But obviously the big story back home, mate, is about Israel. First and foremost, how you know how was he just in terms after losing that fight? What kind of what kind of mental states he in? I think you'll find with, with all of us, um, you know, and, and it's something about New Zealand, but it's also something about uh, our gym and our gym ethos in general. Um, you have to accept defeat and you have to be gracious in the way you look at your defeat and honest and open. Um, and in order to learn, you know, you have to do that in order to learn, move on, get better and come back and, um, you know, turn that defeat around. And Israel's very much about that. Um, he knows how close he got. Um, you know, he made a decision to, to back off the accelerator a little bit in the, in the fifth round um, because he was because he was well up. Um, and, you know, you make a mistake sometimes and he gets to punch like Pajeda and that's what can happen. But we know uh, that Pajeda was rocked and rocked badly on at least two occasions. Um, we know that Israel can, can win that fight um, and he can potentially win it very comfortably. So there's, there's a lot to, to take out of that. Um, if you look at it from a champion's mindset, um, too much weight is placed on being an undefeated monster. Often being an undefeated monster means that the guys that you're competing against weren't good enough. Um, you know, and if you don't have a challenge to, to rise above, uh, how can you say or know that you're truly great? Um, you know, Ali had had his uh, had his you know um, you know very close opponents, Ken Norton, uh, Joe Frazier. Um, you know, they challenged him and he lost fights to them. Uh, even Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard lost fights, uh, and those are the guys who, who who I think I would count as truly great because they were able to overcome adverse adversity in a talent stacked era and come back. Yeah, and. Now that gauntlet is laid down to Israel to see whether he's truly great. Um, can he overcome the psychology of, of, of that defeat? Um, the books say three defeats, but if we're fair, Israel won the first fight between them. But, you know, the books say three defeats. But two KO defeats uh, and fights he was winning and fights he had him on skates. Um, so, you know, uh, he's, he's in a good mindset. He knows what he can do, um, and I suspect that they will go to a, a rematch um, because uh, it was a very, very close fight, and uh, we know there's going to be some unanswered questions. <sighs> Fantastic explanation, and as soon as you say that, I, I'm wondering whether Pereira is his kryptonite, uh, given what you said about Ali. I mean, Ali, the best fighter ever in heavyweight boxing, but there was something about Joe Frazier that, you know, I mean, yes, yes, he did beat him, but he just, every time he fought him, it was never, never easy. It was something about, as you say, Kenny Norton as well. So this guy Pereira, does he have his number or not? Um, well, you can't say at this point that he doesn't. He certainly got, you know, it's advantage Pereira, um, you know, in the fifth set uh, with Pereira on serve. Um, but does Israel have Pereira's number? That's what you've got to ask. He was rocked and rocked badly um, at the end of the first round. He was he was rocked uh, in the third round. Um, you know, so you have to take a look at that. Sorry, not in the third round, in the fourth round. So you have to take a look at that and go, you know, sometimes um, the fight just doesn't go the way. I, I think um, Adesanya is actually... The better and more skilled fighter, but Pajera, um, with his granite chin and his relentless pressure and his ability to have confidence in his power, um, is someone that presses all the right buttons um, to, to get to an Israel Adesanya. Um, but, you know, I still think that fight feels very, very much like 50-50 fight to me. Um, right now, you're going to have to give it 60-40 to Pajera, but... Um, you know, uh, seconds and millimetres changes fights. And I, I think that uh, Adesanya can adapt to that and come back. I, I have absolute confidence in that. Um, but we will see.
we will see because I'm almost certain there will be a third fight. No, sorry, a second fight. And if there's a, a second fight, which um, I expect Israel to win, there will absolutely be a third fight um, because um, you know people one all, will yeah. certainly want to see a trilogy. Yeah, they don't want it. So they don't want it even. So those uh, numb nuts, and there's plenty of them out there who say that you know he's already you know three 0 ahead. Uh, just back up the truck. Different sport, and you saw the impact of that different sport in the clinching. Um, you know, and look, it's a great fight between two of the absolute best strikers ever seen in MMA, and there's no reason for uh, either entertainment or sporting purposes that you wouldn't want to see uh, that kind of fight again. Mike Angove is with us. We're discussing Israel, who lost to Pereira. Two losses in the kickboxing and this one in, in the MMA. I suppose, mate, what we look for as well is we look for patterns, and that's what you'll be looking for as well. And in the last couple of fights, there was a lot of criticism of Israel that he that he kind of backed off or he didn't go full on again. Is that a pattern? Is that something for you to worry about? Um, if you're asking me as, as an analyst, uh, uh has Israel taken his foot off the accelerator and coasted against uh, Cannonier and Whitaker, protecting a lead? Um, I would say I would say he's uh, played it safe, um, and I would say against Pahira, we saw that you can't play it safe um, because he's a, he's a fighter who comes forward and he's dangerous until you know the, the final bell has rung. Yep. So that's something you'll learn from and you won't do again. Um, because when, if you look at uh, when Israel was, was leading the dance, so to speak, uh, he certainly had the edge. But, you know, allowing Tahir to come forward, uh, cramp space and uh, deliver punches and volleys, um, even if you're elusive, uh, can create real problems because uh, Tahira is patient and he's willing to gamble. And... You only need to make one mistake with that guy because he hits so hard. I have to say, people have to also give uh, some credit to Israel. He, he took a lot of shots as well, um, you know, from, from the hero who makes guys go down from a single shot. So, you know, we've got two very well-matched fighters. Um, and, you know, that book is not over. That story still remains with an outcome. Um, you know, uh, it's only one chapter. Um, so let's see how that how that transpires over the next uh, six months or so. I love your analysis, mate. I always do love talking to you. Finally, Mike. So, what about the health issues that Israel has raised? Uh, you know, uh, how 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 big a deal is that, and how is that going to affect him? And say the next, I suppose, the immediate term, six months or so. Because if if this fight goes ahead again, you'd, um, you'd expect it to happen within six months, wouldn't you? Yeah. Look. Um, now, those are for Israel to speak about, but uh, in any camp, you're going to have injuries and, and things that you um, you work through in order to make the fight. One of Israel's great qualities is he, he fights through injuries all the time. And um, people aren't aware of that, but it happens. Um, so when that happens, um, you don't make a big deal about it. But yeah, he's got a few things he, he, he needs to fix that'll that'll help him. Um, but it's not unusual, and most fighters fight through injuries. Awesome, dude. Great talking to you. Fantastic as always. Pass on our very best, mate. I just, I'd just like to add a, add a couple of things, uh, Marty, if sure. I may. Sure, absolutely, bro. Um, I, I, we, we've focused very much on the fact that Israel uh, didn't take the victory, but let's just ha have a quick stop uh, to acknowledge Dan Hooker's victory yes. and his comeback. Yep. He showed some real improvements in his fight. And from what I'm told, he showed some real improvements in camp. Carlos Olberg in that light heavyweight division, oh, he which is awesome. wide open, got he another awesome, vicious mate. knockout. Yeah, he was awesome, mate. He was awesome. And, um, yeah. yeah, and we we got to show, we got to we got to talk about that. Even Brad Riddell, Brad uh, was it was uh, you know he 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 was off, but I, I would like to acknowledge the contribution that that he has made to combat sport over a very very long time. This is what happens at elite level, and for the first time ever in New Zealand history, we had four fighters fighting at elite level uh, in Madison Square Gardens. One of those, a five-time defending world champion, 
uh, Hooker, who's been in the top 15, Brad Riddell, who's been in the top 15, Carlos, who's coming up. I think we can get too caught up uh, in the fact that Izzy didn't necessarily take the victory um, and forget the historic achievements of, of all those athletes and uh, that particular team in general um, is something that, that New Zealand uh, should, should be very proud of because it's never been done before. And, um, you know, these halcyon moments don't last forever. They, they come along, you know, once in a decade, once every two or three decades, if I'm honest. And, um, you know, I, I think we just need to take a moment and, and acknowledge the enormity of what that team and that, those fighters and that group of men have actually achieved.